Oi, what's happening everybody? It's another Balls Deep Breakdown here for UFC 263 with me, your host, Uncle Wheezy. We are going to be talking today about Panny Kianzad versus Alexis Davis coming up this Saturday night. Uh, this is a couple of uh, bantamweights here that are going to be going at it. We got a probably what most would call a striker versus grappler matchup between these two. And uh, let's just get into the stats here. Let's see if we can find a way to profit from this fight. Uh, we'll start with the tail of the tape, like we always do. Uh, age, Alexis Davis, 36. Panny, 29. Seven, year, seven years younger for Panny. That's a good thing. One inch taller. Uh, Alexis Davis, a two inch reach advantage. Uh, these were both orthodox fighters. We got uh, Panny Kianzad fighting out of Sweden, Art Suave, and uh, Alexis Davis out of Canada and Caesar Gracie Jiu-Jitsu there. So we see that Panny obviously much younger here. That's a very good thing. 36 is getting old for a mixed martial artist. We shouldn't be surprised though that Alexis Davis is 36 years old because she's literally fought everybody. And we'll get into the pro experience here. I mean, Alexis Davis is one of the OGs of any women's division, but it is mostly the bantamweight division. She's had a couple fights recently at 125 pounds as well. Uh, we see that Alexis Davis has 30 pro fights. But Penny Kianzad, you would think with her being seven years younger that, you know, there would be a huge experience advantage here, but there really isn't. Penny Kianzad, 19 fights in her own right. That's quite a few for uh, women's mixed martial artists. You don't see too many with that, uh, with that amount of fights. And she is 14 and five, while Alexis Davis is 20 and 10. Um, cage time, we see that uh, 348 minutes a cage time for uh, Alexis Davis, as opposed to 222 for Panny. And uh, the, the average fight time is almost the same, and we see that uh, Alexis Davis uh, been a pro mixed martial artist since she was uh, 22 years old with a 14-year career. And uh, panny has been in the game herself for nine years, and she had some kickboxing experience prior to that. So Panny is no rookie by any stretch of the imagination. However, we still have to give the experience advantage to Alexis Davis, even though you know she's got a lot of tread on those tires. So. Uh, 12 UFC fights for Alexis Davis as, as compared to 5 for Panny. We see that Alexis is 7-5 and five and Panny is 3-2. and two. Uh, about, about 90 more minutes of cage time here for uh, Alexis Davis with 151 as opposed to 67. And average fight time very similar. Both of these ladies are not necessarily finishers. Um, and let's get into the stats, uh, the finish stats here. We can see that in the UFC, Alexis Davis has finished 14% of her wins by uh, subs. That's one submission win out of seven victories and no KOs. While Panny Kianzad has never finished anybody in the UFC. And we see that panny has got a 21% uh, finish rate overall in her 14 wins. So that means uh, three wins uh, overall by knockout out of 14 and no subs. While Alexis Davis has 40% of her overall wins by sub. And that's 20 of them, so we know that that's uh, uh, eight wins by sub and two wins by KO at 10%. Um, losses, Alexis Davis gets finished by submission 20% of the time and by KO 20% of the time. And Penny Kianzad's weakness when she gets finished is submission. Uh, she only has five career losses though, so um, why it would say 50% submission would is weird because that would only be oh in the UFC okay so she's lost one of her fights by submission and that was to Macy Chase on but overall 40% uh, of her losses are by sub so two overall losses by sub one of them in the UFC and she has been knocked out 20% of the time so one knockout loss as well while overall uh, Alexis Davis has been knocked out in 30% of her losses while it's only 10% by sub and she was subbed by uh, uh, McMahon arm triangle choke. So that was her only loss by sub in her entire career. And that's 10 losses. So um, we see that in the UFC, she has 20% of her uh, losses by sub, 20% by KO. So let's kind of go into Alexis Davis. I want, I want to take a look at the um, tapology profile on Alexis Davis here so you can kind of get an idea of the professional experience of this woman. You know, we see Sabina Mazo or Araujo, Maya Chukagi in a three fight uh, losing streak. Liz Carmouche, Cindy Dandois, Sarah McMahon, Sarah Kaufman, Ronda Rousey, Jessica I, Liz Carmouche, Sexton, Baszler, Kaufman, 
She has a win over Amanda Nunez back in 2011. Uh, she finished Amanda Nunez, as a matter of fact. Julie Kedzi, Tanya Evinger. This is a who's who of women's mixed martial arts here. I mean, Tanya Evinger twice, Shayna Baszler twice, Tara La Rosa. Uh, Valley, Valerie Letourneau was her fourth professional fight. Her first was against Sarah Kaufman back in 2007. So, you know, Alexis Davis has fought everybody. She is the quintessential you know, veteran, the KG veteran, um, you know, and she's got a ton of scarf issue on, tissue on her face, you know, she wears damage, kind of like Nate Diaz, this, this woman takes a hot shower and she starts bleeding from the forehead, and usually about two minutes into the fight, her face starts to swell up like she had a seafood allergy, and then usually by the end of the fight, her face looks like Johnny Bench's catcher's mitt after a 15 inning game, so, you know, this is a woman who is so tough. She's so experienced. She has been around and fought literally everybody. You don't want to count out Alexis Davis. She finds ways to win. But let's get back into the stats here. Um, let's go to the striking statistics for both of these ladies. And uh, we can see here that Pani Kianzad uh, lands 5.14 strikes per minute out of 10.45 attempted for a 49.15% striking accuracy, while Alexis Davis, a little bit lower volume at 3.55, landed out of 8.07, a little bit lower accuracy at 44%. Neither one of these ladies has a knockdown in the UFC. This is important. Um, we, this is you know one of the things that tells us that this fight is probably going to a decision. Um, if we look at the defensive numbers, we see um, both, uh, well, actually, Penny, if you look at, she lands 5.14 per minute and only absorbs 3.62. That's a very impressive ratio. She outvolumes her opponents as well. And she has a 57% striking defense, which is very good. Um, she has been knocked down, though. She's been knocked down 0.82% uh, of the uh, total significant strikes landed against her. So she's been knocked down 0.45 times. Uh, per 15 minutes, you know, uh, so I, I'm guessing that that is going to be the one knockdown that she got knocked down by um, Macy Chase on, and that was at 145 pounds, so that's something to um, to look at there. Uh, Alexis Davis, tough as nails, she's never even been knocked down, and she's absorbed 566 strikes in the UFC, so, um, but she does absorb more strikes than she lands. So that is a bit of a red flag. She lands 3.55 and absorbs uh, 3.74, plus her uh, opponents outvolume her on the feet as well. So those are the striking statistics. You know, I would definitely give Panny an edge here in the striking. She is the striker in the proverbial striker versus grappler matchup here. That's not to say Alexis couldn't win a round on the feet, but I, you know, I would be surprised if that happened. This is, you know, on the feet is where Panny is the most comfortable. And on the, on the ground is where Alexis Davis does her best work. So let's see how effective Alexis Davis is to getting the fight to the ground. And let's see how good Panny is at keeping the fight standing. That's going to really be, in my opinion, um, the stats that we need to look at in order to figure out how this fight is going to go. Um, so Alexis Davis, um, I want to scroll over just a little bit here so that you can see. I hope this gets everything. Let me just tease this over. So we want to note that Alexis Davis has 12 fights in the UFC. In those 12 fights, she's attempted only 24 takedowns, two takedown attempts per fight in the UFC, but she's landed 10 of them. So 41.67% takedown accuracy, that's good. That's very good. Uh, she averages getting 0.99 takedowns per 15 minutes. She averages 0.89 submission attempts per 15 minutes with a 28% control time in the UFC. So that's pretty good. We see that Panny has only attempted seven takedowns. She's only gotten one in her five UFC fights. 14.29% uh, takedown percentage, 0.22 takedowns per 15 minutes, 0.22 sub attempts per 15 minutes, and only 9.05% control time. So uh, if we look at the defense here, we see an 83.33% takedown defense for Kianzad. And we'll, we'll look further into that in the advanced stats um, to see who's taking her down, who's not taking her down, who, you know, how many attempts she's facing per fight. But uh, she has been taken down two-thirds of a time per 15 minutes, 
She's been she's had almost a half a submission attempt attempted against her in um, in 15 minutes, and in uh, her UFC career, she's been controlled 30 percent. So that's a lot. Uh, we see that 39% of her fights have taken place in control time, 9% and 30%. And uh, Davis's has been about 48% if we add the 20 and the 28 together. So uh, more of Davis's fights take place in control time than Panny. Let's have a look at the advanced stats here and kind of take a look at how many uh, takedowns Alexis Davis has been attempting lately, how successful she's been. And so let's look at um, in the last five fights, three for three takedowns against Sabina Mazo, and she won that fight. She was 0 for 4 on her takedowns against uh, Viviani Araujo. She lost that fight. However, I want to note that she did get a takedown in that fight. She, well, it wasn't really a takedown. Um, she shot unsuccessfully for a takedown. Uh, when she didn't get it, she tried to wrap up um, Araujo's leg, rolled for a leg lock unsuccessfully. When Araujo rolled away from the leg lock to get her leg uh, back to safety, um, Davis scrambled and wound up getting on top of her. So they didn't credit her with a takedown, but she didn't even get one, and she still won one round of that fight by getting 226 seconds of control time here, um, because when she did take Araujo down, she stayed on top. Um, we see in the uh, Maya fight, she was one of two on takedowns. In the Chukagian fight, she was one of two on takedowns. And in the Carmouche fight, she was one of three on takedowns. And we do see a good amount of control time here. In her last six fights, even with Dan Dua, she was out-controlled. She was a little bit out-controlled by Carmouche here. But we see that uh, she out-controlled Maya, she out-controlled uh, Araujo, and she definitely out-controlled Mazo. So it's pretty easy to see that uh, Alexis's path to victory is getting those takedowns accruing uh, control time and winning by decision. Um, Panny, let's look at Panny's numbers here. All right, so this is gonna be Panny here, and we've got five fights. We've got the Eubanks, Correa, Clark, Avila, and Chason fights. So let's go over to the defensive side of things here, and we can get an idea now, or look at the stats here. So we see that um, in her last fight, uh, Penny, uh, or I mean Eubanks took her down two times out of four attempts. Uh, one for five on, on the fight before that, which was the um, Correa fight. And then Clark, Avila, and Chason were all unsuccessful in taking her down. Um, we could see that Clark was 0 of 2 on takedowns, 0 for 2 there. We see that 0 for 1 here and uh, Chason actually 0 for 6. However, Chason did knock her down. And it was when the knockdown landed that uh, Chason got on top and then eventually got the submission. So we can see here that she's been taken down three times. She's been knocked down twice. And, um, have her, op and her opponents have never reversed position. So in those five takedowns, or on three takedowns and five uh, total, those five total times when her opponents got on top of her, whether it was via a takedown or a knockdown, they have attempt they have gotten 365 seconds of control time out of 4,031 in the cage time. So 365 divided by five is about you know seven. It's about 70 seconds of control time per advantageous position that uh, Panny Kianzad is giving up. So I believe that if Alexis Davis can get on top two out of these three rounds, she can win this fight by decision. But if she's not able to do that, uh, Panny Kianza should cruise to a, um, a striking victory here. But let's look lastly here at the strength of schedule. So we know kind of who these ladies have fought already. We can see that the ratio of Panny Kianza's competition is, uh, has a 1.6 win to loss ratio while Alexis Davis has a 1.17. So uh, Kianza has fought the, the slightly less experienced competition, but the better win-loss record overall. Um, we see that the wins here, uh, the wins for Kianza are actually better than the wins for Alexis Davis, and that Kianza is actually beating the more experienced competition as well. 
And when we look at the losses, we see that Keon Zed is losing to the better competition as well with a 2.0 ratio as opposed to the 1.38 ratio that Alexis Davis's competition has a win to loss when they've beaten her. But Davis's uh, losses have come to more experienced competition with average fights of 7.6 as opposed to uh, Keon Zed for only three. So if we look at the last five here, Macy Chason, the only girl to beat Kianza in the last five, and then, or I'm sorry, uh, Chason and Avila, and she was knocked down in both of those fights. And then wins over Jessica Rose Clark, Betch Correa, and Sajara Eubanks. And then we see that Sabina Mazo uh, was a win for Alexis Davis, and then it's Ara Ujo loss by decision, Maya loss by decision, and Chukagian loss by decision, and then a win over Liz Carmouche. So... Both of these girls fighting pretty impressive competition, but I'd have to give the strength of schedule edge a little bit to uh, Kianzad here. I'm giving the grappling edge to Davis. I'm giving the striking edge to Kianzad. The measurables and career experience, you know, Davis is more experienced, but Kianzad is younger. And it looks like Davis is the more, uh, the more accomplished finisher. So, you know, I see multiple paths to victory here. Kianzad can get that... Uh, can, can keep the fight standing and, and work for a uh, you know a striking based victory on the feet. Alexis Davis is going to probably have to get this fight to the ground in order to be successful. Um, but if she can do that just twice, she can win a, uh, a decision here. Um, let's have a look at the odds. Um, for this fight, we see that uh, Davis is a plus 160 underdog, Panny Kianzad minus 210 favorite. And what I want to note here is that the uh, will the fight go the distance? Uh, we're showing minus 430 for that. So, you know, they're basically saying, you know, that there's, you know, somewhere around a 20% chance, you know, that this thing, that this thing gets finished. And it's probably even less than that. So, you know, that might be a decent parlay piece if you guys are looking to throw together a, high, a Hail Mary parlay here. But yeah, 430 plus four th or minus 430 for fight goes, goes the distance tells me that if you want to get some value here, you can either bet uh, Kianzad by points, which is minus 125, or Alexis Davis by points, which is plus 250. So instead of um, plus 160, you can get plus 250 for if you like Davis to win this fight. Or if you like Kianzad, instead of uh, paying up minus 210, you know, maybe just take it down to the minus 125. You get a lot better value. You can bet 1.25 units for a one unit return if you think Kianzad keeps this on the feet. If you think Davis has a chance to, to eke out a decision here, plus 250 is okay. I mean, uh, it's decent value, two and a half times your money. You know, if it happens, you know, it happens. But remember how badly Alexis Davis wears damage on her face. So it might be, you know, bad at the, at the end of the fight if, she, if her face is swelled up. You know, they might just give it to Kianza. But um, one... one note before we go here that I wanted to leave for you guys was Clint on the Die Hard MMA podcast about three weeks ago brought up a great point and when he was talking about the Font Garbrandt card and he had noticed earlier on in that card that Jack Hermanson had won a decision based on uh, control time and there was one other fight that uh, you know somebody who had racked up more control time rather than landing the more impressive strikes um, wound up getting a decision and if you see that early on in this card where somebody, you know, kind of gets a grappling-based decision instead of a striking-based decision, where it seems like the um, the judges might be valuing grappling more, if you see that, you might want to take a shot on that uh, Alexis Davis by decision at plus 250. You know, that's not a bad look. It, you know, I think she can win the decision here. She just has to be crafty. She has to find a way to get Kianza uh, down to the ground, and if she does, you know, we show this, we, we have shown that Kianzad can be controlled for long periods of time when she is taken down. Uh, Sijara Eubanks did it in the last fight. She clearly won that first round, but then really wasn't able to control her much after that, and Kianzad got that decision, 29-28. But if, if Davis can find a way to control two rounds here, she can win this fight. But that's all I got for you guys here. Um, look in the description if you want to download the matchup template here. I've got all the fights in the matchup template. Chase Hooper, Steven Peterson, Zayam Vendramini, Felipe Collier, you know, Evloev Dawadu, um, Murphy Calderwood. 
The link to this uh, matchup template will be in the description of this video. I'd like to thank all of you for watching. Please leave a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. I will be continuing to do these Balls Deep breakdowns for as many fights as I can find every week um, that I think have some interesting statistics to go over. Um, but thank you all for watching. I will check you all next time and talk to you soon. Let's cash these tickets.